Okay. Um, we are, members, we are down to three items here. It is 10 minutes to three. I would like to endeavor to get us out of here maybe by about 3.30 or so, if that's doable. That would allow everybody time uh, to check back in at, at the hotel and have a little time before our function tonight. So I'll ask that you all help me out. Uh, uh, to make that happen. I'll ask staff that they help me out uh, as well, too, as we present these, um, these uh, final um, items, and we'll try to work right through to thereabouts. Um, item 4.3, Executive Vice Chancellor Skinner, Patrick Perry, update on the Student Success Task Force. Uh, recommendations. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Chancellor Scott, and members of the Board of Governors. Um, the item before you is an update on the Student Success Task Force implementation. And um, already today, you've covered quite a bit of ground in this area, um, including the enrollment priority regulations, a very significant, I'd, I'd call it a cornerstone piece of, this, of the student success work. Uh, and then, uh, then in um, Vice Chancellor Garcia's legislative update, she touched on uh, SB 1456, which includes both the student support initiative and also the, the uh, new academic requirements on the Board of Governors fee waivers, as well as the other bill, SB 1062, that was our attempt to try to expand the, the ability of the Chancellor to have uh, greater, uh, greater leadership potential in terms of controlling his, his staff in the Chancellor's office. So already today you've covered many of these pieces. What we wanted to do was to touch on three topics. One is to share with you a new uh, uh, tracking matrix that, we're, that we've developed. It's, it's included in your board agenda um, under item 4.3. And it's a, a GAN chart style um, tracking document. And this came in response to requests from the board and also from some other uh, parties to try to keep track of the various recommendations of the Student Success Task Force. And they're, um, they're, they're the 22 recommendations that came out of that, that process. And so trying to keep tabs on which of those recommendations are currently being implemented, which ones are on hold, and what phase of, of implementation are they? Um, that uh, we've developed this chart as at least a first attempt, and this, this is the first day we're really sunshining this, so it's an attempt to, to, uh, to again, to, to track and display that activity. And we wanted to share with you as a board to see if see if it worked for you, and, and also to seek your recommendations on how to improve it. Um, the two other items that we're going to touch on briefly are Vice Chancellor Perry is going to provide an overview on this on the updates to. Um, this, the, student, uh, the student success scorecard, so the new accountability tool that will be going into place this spring at our community colleges. And then Vice Chancellor uh, Russell will touch, will provide you an update on some, some summits that he's been leading to help move forward recommendations in the areas of basic skills and professional development. So I'm just gonna start with that, that uh, the tracking matrix, and hopefully you've all been able to find it in your agenda. And um, a, as I noted, you know, hopefully it speaks for itself. I mean, that's the, the, the goal of this is that would be a, a, a display that communicates a lot of information in one place. Uh, the, uh, there are already a, a couple improvements that people have pointed out to me that we're going to in incorporate, but the, I, I did want to note that the, in, in the, um, the bars, the title bars that, ha that are in blue were the, those were the chapter headers from the, the task force report. And so you won't see any activity in any, any of those blue bars. So increased college and career readiness, that's not a specific recommendation. That was a grouping of recommendations. So the, it's, it's actually, you know, the, each of the white bars represents the, the 22 various recommendations. So that's presented and I, um, definitely open for any questions or comments on that, uh, either. Very helpful at this setting or, or at a future setting. 
Okay, we will, we'll work to continue to improve that, and if, if there are specific ideas or recommendations, please pipe them to us and we'll work on them. So with that, in the interest of moving things along, I'll pass it over to the vice chancellors and they can provide you an update on those, uh, the two other recommendations. Okay, thank you. So uh, in 1997, we had the Partnership for Excellence, and some of you may remember that. And when that sunset in 2003, we had AB 1417, which by 2005 created the current accountability report that we have today, also known as ARC, or Accountability Reporting for the Community Colleges. The Student Success Task Force recommended that we go through the accountability framework again and <coughs> create what's called an accountability scorecard. And we have now had five very successful meetings uh, with both Chancellor's Office staff number of control agencies, LAO, Department of Finance, and also system constituents where we have come up with a recommended scorecard framework for you, and that starts on page 75 of your handouts. Probably the, the best display of it is on page 78, the uh, page with the big uh, triangle on it, uh, more humorously known as the Perry Pyramid. <laughs> So the proposed scorecard now will have four layers of reporting, each at a different level of aggregation of data and each primarily for different types of audiences. On the top of the pyramid, you will have what we call a state of the system report. This, this has overall statewide numbers. It doesn't break things down by campus. Um, it's, it will be you know, a PDF type of document. It will have all of the scorecard metrics, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, elevated to their statewide aggregation. So we'll see those numbers and it'll also contain some of the other statewide numbers that you're used to seeing like participation rates, annual volumes of transfers, annual volumes of degrees, um, and our wage study. So uh, it'll also have some enrollment detail that I give, you know, how to give the, the annual report on enrollments and headcount and that kind of thing in the system. That will be encompassed in the state of the system report. Below that you have what we call the ARC scorecard and this will be broken down by campus. It will be primarily delivered electronically over the web. People will be able to print from it at any different level, but it will be a web-based and delivered report. These will have college metrics by single level demographic under each metrics. Um, the uh, advisory committee recommended that we have no more than seven metrics. We ended up with six. Three of these are what we call high order outcome metrics and three of them are what we call momentum points. Um, very briefly, the metrics in this layer are uh, student progress and achievement rate for degree and transfer seeking students. This is the high order outcome metric for students who we identify behaviorally as seeking a degree or a transfer. And the outcomes we're looking at there are did they get a degree or did they transfer? Okay, very high level, high order type of outcome uh, display. That single metric represents half of our headcount in the system and actually 83% of our FTES falls into that single metric. There's two momentum points for that same group of students. Uh, the first is what percentage of that same population persists from their starting point through their first three terms contiguously of college. So do they stay in college for their first three terms? And the second momentum point is for that same group, what percentage of that population achieves or earns 30 units? So a halfway point. So there are three metrics related to that. We have another metric that relates specifically to uh, students in a CTE program. We've identified behaviorally students who are in CTE clusters and it's the same type of outcome. Uh, do they get a degree, do they get a certificate or do they transfer? We have another outcome, a high order outcome for students in CDCP or Career Development College Prep, which is a non-credit uh, category that we get special funding for. Same type of outcomes, degree, certificate, transfer. And two other momentum points, we have a, sorry, one other momentum point, the last one is a math, English, and should be ESL progression rate. These are for students who start in remediation, regardless of where they start, do they finish remediation in their particular um, area, math, English, or ESL. Um, we will break these down in this layer by single demographics, so progress and achievement rate by ethnicity, by age, by various other status. 
the next layer underneath this is what we call the data mart layer. This is already out there. We have a lot of metrics already in the data mart. Everything that's in the scorecard will also be in the data mart, but we'll have multiple cross tabs. So you can look at by age, by gender, by ethnicity, all in one. Okay? Probably more of a, a layer for higher level researchers, still available to the public, however. And then the fourth layer, which is available only to campuses because it contains student unit records, is what we call the data on demand layer, and that is where all of these metrics, the unit records that are used in the creation of these metrics are available for download by the local campus IT or research staff so that they can then take it and further analyze it against their own data files. We will still have the requirement that the scorecard metrics be taken to your local board of trustees once a year for them to interact with, and we do collect that interaction to make sure it follows the proper ed code. So that, in summary, is where this is headed. Um, we're actually finishing this up, starting to code this, and we should have it out on the streets by March the 31st, 2013. And if I could... Yeah, first, I'd like to uh, thank... Vice Chancellor Perry, very much for all the progress that has been made on this. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, second, I would say it would be helpful for me. I can't talk about the other board members. If perhaps at our next meeting, you could bring illustrations of the data in these various categories. It's one thing to be able to look at the category to hear <coughs> what you say. It's another thing to see it and to be able to really tell. Personally. I would get much more out of the latter than I'm able to get out of the former. Okay. So uh, I, to me, it would come alive with that. So I would like to request that at perhaps at our next meeting. And I'm sorry, Eric, I know you have one, you have one more. If I could just in closing, I just, um, in terms, a couple I, things I want to point out on the scorecard. Um, Patrick, you know, Vice Chancellor Perry just, I think, did a fabulous job working with a, a, a practitioner work group that's a model we've tried to use with each of the task force recommendations we've worked on. Uh, there were students, faculty, staff, other stakeholders. We had the Legislative Analyst Office and Department of Finance at the table. And he just did a great job of working through some very important and sensitive topics. And so kudos to, to Patrick and his staff. And, and then lastly, from a workload perspective, we just I wanted to underscore um, this whole the scorecard proposal and the, the, the initiative, the way it's been crafted, it is actually, um, it, it works, it represents no additional workload for the colleges compared to the current reporting that's underway. In fact, it's probably less. And so it was a, a conscious effort here to work within that footprint of the current arc and build something that was no, no more labor intensive than that and if possible less labor intensive. So it, it should, it, it's, it's, a, it's an efficient, a cost effective system and really well put together. So I, th I think it's going to be a big, big step forward. Hey, um, very quickly, there are two summits. Uh, one has happened. The Basic Skills Summit happened at the end of July. Uh, we brought a group together who did a great job of uh, looking at what has been done in basic skills, with beginning with the Basic Skills Initiative and the, the puppy copy, as we refer to it, the, the document, the literature review of best practices and, and how to move forward. Now we're turning that into a look at what we have done in the last five years, what is working, um, and in some cases what's not working, and to identify those things, to write a, a resource document that we can use internally with campuses as we move forward uh, about things, that, specific things that seem to change basic skills success. Um, and uh, get those out to the campuses. Um, in addition, we'll be building some resource documents to get that information out to uh, legislators and other uh, policymakers, um, uh, board members at local districts and things like that to give them more information about the basic skills work that's being done in the state. Um, uh, the basic skills committee continues to work. We did uh, appoint a new person to follow up um, after Mark Wade Liu uh, left us. He went back to Ohlone, his Ohlone campus as a dean. Uh, Barbara Alowski is taking that uh, job, and uh, she will be leading this project. Um, next week, she's working with the Basic Skills Advisory Committee to uh, firm up more of the work to be done. We anticipate 
um, some of the documents to start rolling out as early as January and February of this next year. Um, the second summit is the Professional Development Summit, and that actually takes place um, Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Um, we'll, uh, several of us will be leaving here and going up to uh, Pomona. It'll take place at the Kellogg uh, Retreat Center in Pomona. Um, we'll have a day and a half of about 30 people who are from all areas of the campus um, who deal with uh, the campus and statewide organizations who provide professional development for the system. We're going to bring them together to talk about what is provided, how we might do a better job of doing that, and also looking at some of the, the regulations, specifically the flex calendar legislation that does provide um, support for campuses to do professional development uh, on their campus. Um, and looking at that regulation to see if there are things that need to be changed there or redirected. Uh, it's been some years since that was put in place, um, and the world has changed a bit um, all the way around. So we want to check it out, um, uh, take the pulse, and decide if we need to do something about that. And so that information will come. That committee will be meeting, uh, as I said, this week, then followed up by two um, uh, conference or teleconferences that will happen um, before the end of the year so that we can come back uh, probably by January and give you the recommendations specifically that come from that professional development committee. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate it.